Good evening and welcome to today's message from Lossie Baptist Church in Scotland. Good evening and welcome, welcome to our uh, baptismal service th- this evening. It's always special to have a baptismal service and so we give you a special welcome tonight. Um, we are delighted that uh, Tabs is going through the uh, waters of baptism and um, so we just look forward to that tonight. Um, just a couple of announcements. The um, one thing to mention here is the Christianity Explored The new course for that is starting on the 23rd of August. Sounds an awful long time away, but it's not really. It's only just over a month away. Um, So if you can be thinking of people to bring along to that, that would be good. A couple of people to remember, if we can remember George Ann Black, she's uh, just had an operation on Friday, and so therefore if you can remember her for uh, her recovery. And also, if you mentioned this morning that Lisa, on the last day of her holidays, had fallen and broken her wrist in several places. Well, I believe that she got home last night, and she's now in hospital getting fitted back together again. So they're remaking her. So we look forward to seeing her back here again in uh, a a short time. And also, I believe I made a mistake this morning by mentioning that um, Sandy and me were married 65 years, and I'm told it's only 60 years. <laughs> Still a wonderful achievement. Um, I will just have a time of prayer then. Father, we thank you for this morning's service. We thank you for the way that we were challenged on how we so easily forget the power that is in everything that God does. He is so good to us in so many different ways. Let us never forget just how powerful he is and that he does nothing without there being a a purpose. We thank you for uh, Duncan and for the uh, message that he brought this morning. And Father, we just ask that we would reflect on that as we um, go into this next week. We bring um, Liam before you tonight. He's going to be preaching tonight as part of the baptismal service. And we just thank you for the freshness that Liam brings to the church. We also thank you for our pastor, Rab, and we thank you for the uh, enthusiasm and the passion that he has for you and the way that both of our pastors gel together so well. Father, it could so easily have been that they didn't get on, but we are so grateful to you that they both get on so well and in your name. So, Father, we do look forward to great things happening in this area, and we just pray for all those who are here tonight and all those who will be watching the service um, online as well, and we just pray that you may be glorified through this act of, uh, this witness of baptism tonight and of public faith, and Father, we just pray that You would be with, uh, especially with Tabs, but with each and every one of us tonight as we come to worship now in your name. Amen. Let's stand to sing, blessed assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a Salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, lost in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is
am blessed Watching and waiting Looking upon Filled with His goodness Lost in His love This is my story Worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. I'll just change key, shall I? <laughs> That's what happens when you get a little bit older.
little bit lost there. Good evening. Well, it is what a joy to be here tonight, isn't it? It's great to see so many people out for Tabitha's baptism. Many of us, well, don't really know her as Tabitha. We know her as Tabs, um, as some folk had not, were not really sure who was getting baptized this evening, um, because we all know her as Tabs, um, but it's great to be here. It's been a real joy for me to get to know Tabs over the last few months that I've been a part of the fellowship. Um, I really appreciate her support as a youth leader in the fellowship. I've, I've been just overjoyed to see her and her growth in, in taking a leadership role for the young people and um, also just stepping into developing her teaching gifts in particular over this last term and the term before that with the teenagers. And as well, a, a special welcome to Tabs's mum and dad and a couple of her friends who have travelled all the way from um, down south, south England, to be here today. And uh, it's a real joy to have you here with us as well. In a little while, we're going to hear from Tabs. We're going to hear her testimony and where God has taken her through life. But before we do that, we're going to just, for a short time, look at what baptism is, what it represents. And, and together, this day is a, a day of rejoicing. If you know the Lord Jesus as your Savior today, we're here to rejoice in the hope in which we have received in salvation. And we're going to do that by looking at Romans 6 together tonight, which is page 942 in your blue Bible. And if you do not have a blue Bible or you don't have any Bible, please take one away um, tonight. These are yours. They don't have Lossy Baptist stamped on them anywhere. It can be your Bible. We love to give them out. Romans 6, and we're going to read um, from verses 1 to 14. And the word of God says this. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like this, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like this. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you, so you also must consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you're not under the law, but under grace. Amen. God's word to us. Let's pray together as we look at this passage for a short time. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you that we gather in your name, that you are our hero of heaven. For how you've conquered the grave, Lord, thank you that we have much to celebrate and give thanks for when we know you. Lord, we thank you for this challenge and this reminder that Paul gives us. Lord, that when we know you, we are alive, that we know freedom, that we know fullness of life. And so, Lord, I pray for, for all of us here tonight that we would, if we know you, respond in gladness. And if we don't know you, that we would come to know you today. Lord, thank you for this passage. Thank you for this service and our time together. In your precious name, amen. Tonight, if, if I asked you why you were here, I wonder what you would say to me. As I look at our, some of your faces, I know some familiar faces here. You're here every Sunday. 
Um, perhaps you're here visiting from another church. Perhaps you would say that you're, you've been coming to church recently because you're exploring the meaning of life. You're trying to figure out um, all of life's meaning and purpose. Maybe you're here today because baptisms are special. Maybe you rarely come to church, and yet today you've chosen to come and to see what baptism is all about. I think deep down, whether we, we like to admit it or not, every person that we know and every person here looks for truth and answers. All of us look for meaning to life. We, we talk about life's biggest questions. We want meaning, we want purpose. If you, if you look through all of human history, every tribe, community, every civilization, all people throughout human history has looked for meaning and truth. The reality of the human condition is, is laboring on day after year, uh, day after day, year after year, working, seeking truth. Because whether we, we consciously accept this or not, we all know that, our, that we have ultimate vulnerability. We all know that life is broken. And we know that a life without any purpose and meaning is, is disastrous. One day, we, we know well, well and truly that, that we'll die. There's no guarantee to life except this, that, that life ends in, in death. And, I, and I've been telling you that this is a day of celebration. Nobody likes to hear that this is the reality. But it's truth, isn't it? It's not good news that one day we die. And when we think about all this, life really does hang by a thread. There's nothing that we're entitled to in life. And yet we read a passage like this in Romans 6, and it tells us that you can live life to the fullest when you know Jesus as your Savior. And we find out what it means to, to, to be alive because we know the power of Jesus, we can be alive. Death and resurrection that, that Jesus has, has, has participated in has given us freedom and hope. And Tabs is going to proclaim and has proclaimed and will tonight that she's found that truth and her hope, and she has found ultimate purpose because she's found life in Jesus, in his death, in his resurrection, for, his, for, for the way in which he has died for her sin once and for all. This new life that, that we see in Romans 6, and, and Tabs will share a bit of her story later, this is a, an invitation for you to share in the same life today. This search for answers to life's biggest questions and meaning and truth is universal among anyone that's ever lived. And, and what this shows us when we ask these big questions in life is it shows that something is incomplete. If our lives were so together and they were so complete, why do we even ask these hard questions in the first place? If our lives are so together, why do we often feel so weak and empty? And I want to tell you tonight that that's because something isn't right with our lives if it's without Jesus. Tonight, you've maybe come and in, in, in the experience of your life, you've looked for these tough questions and you've searched in the wrong places. You've filled the void. And admitting this is really difficult, but it's an honest thing. Admitting how frail and, and, and broken we are is humbling. And tonight, I encourage you to think about your own life. Think about your purpose. Think about what it means to have a relationship with Jesus. Not the person next to you, but think about you tonight and your standing with God. There is something wrong with, with this world and this life. We know something isn't right. We, we feel it in our hearts. We see brokenness. We see hurting around us, and it's not right. We know when things are wrong. We know that there is something better. Perhaps that is the reality of of what's driven you to church. And if that is, I'm glad that you're here today. The Bible gives us the, the answers to these tough questions. The Bible tells us God made his creation perfectly and he made it without fault. And God gave his, his creation freedom. He didn't make us to be like robots, but allowed us to, to freely love him as creator. In the beginning, the first people, Adam and Eve, God said to them how to live life to the fullest, to trust and love him, to live in relationship with him. But the reality is something went wrong, and, and that's when sin entered the world. 
Sin is when we choose God's, uh, your way over God's way. It is to reject the way of God. It's to reject the way that God has created us to live. Rejecting God is, is walking away from meaning and purpose to life. And God being so holy and just, so good and righteous, sin and evil cannot be in his presence. And in sin, which is so inescapable in our lives, we know we've all done things in which we're not proud of. None of us are perfect, and if we try to be perfect, and that is our goal of life, then I'm here to tell you then that, that that's impossible to be perfect. And so, in Genesis, we see a righteous God, and we see creation broken, and sin tainting us. People cut themselves off from God, and turned away from Him. And yet God still chooses to love us, and God loves us because of who he is, and this is who we're meant to be. I've said this before in a, in a previous sermon about C.S. Lewis, who, who wrote the Chronicles of Narnia. And he said that a person who doesn't know God is like a petrol car trying to run on diesel. And they're not built to work like that, and they don't work. And what that is to say is, is your life, it, it works a little without Jesus, because we're made to know our, our, our Heavenly Father. And we might think that life works like a car that works in the wrong, um, on the wrong diesel. It splutters, it's messy. We're not made to live like that. And ultimately, life stops working and, all, and, and life becomes destructive. We are all made to live in relationship with God. Despite our sinfulness and our rejection, our turning away from God, he wanted to make it right with us. Despite our mistakes, he sent Jesus, the Son of God, to make a way. Jesus, who came fully God, yet, yet as a baby, far from the glories of heaven. Jesus, who came and, and lived a perfect life. Jesus, who, who stood up for the lost, who, who healed the sick, who, who had compassion for people that others would mock and have no time for. Jesus, the Son of God, who, who taught us how to live, and he taught truth about our ultimate vulnerability. He taught our need to know him. And some people couldn't take it, and they sent him to die a painful death on the cross. When Jesus, the Son of God, came to rescue us, the very people who rejected him, the very people he came to, to save, they shouted, crucify, crucify. And yet this is how much God loves you and I. And I hope you know that tonight, just how much God loves us. How God longs for people to know him. How he longs for us to be made right with him. Jesus came taking the sins of the world. The son of man who died. The son of, man who, the son of God who took the ultimate sacrifice for sin. Jesus who took our punishment on the cross. Taking the wrath of God because he is righteous. Nothing he did was for us. It was for him. Nothing he did was for him. The way he emptied himself was for us. Everything in my, we might receive was not for him, but it was for us. And on earth, Jesus said that famous passage, didn't he? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not die, but have eternal life. Jesus took the ultimate sacrifice. Jesus took the, the, the sins of people in past and present, and their future sins. And all he asks for in return is for us to follow him and to trust him. The power of sin over us was destroyed, and three days later, Jesus rose back to life. He beat death, he beat sin, and we, we celebrate today, if you know Jesus, that sin and death has no power over you in your life. And this is what baptism is. It's, it's a reminder of what Jesus has done. And it's a public witness of a person's commitment and declaration that their life will be lived in the light of, of this truth in which they rejoice in and in which they know in every aspect of their life. We're going to see tabs lower down into the water. And it's a picture of remembering Jesus lower down into the tomb. The Son of God, dead and buried. And this symbolizes a person 
who's been, as, they, as they're lowered into the water, they, they die to their old self because that is what they are dying from. Jesus saved them from their old life and they die to themselves as they're lowered down into the water. And when we see, we're gonna see tabs raised out of the water, we remember Jesus being raised back to life. And as tabs will be raised from the water, we celebrate that, that there is new life to be found in Jesus. And our passage, verses eight to 10, say this. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live him, with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. Christ died to sin. He bore its penalty. If you know Christ Jesus today, your sin has been paid for. When you identify with him, when you identify with what he's done on the cross, when you rejoice in repentance and salvation and receiving that, he has paid for your sin. And with that penalty paid, sin has no claim over you. It has no authority over you. Its power has nothing on you. God in his miraculous and marvelous grace closes that chapter of our, of our sinful, desolate, broken lives without any hope and ruin, and turns a page for us, starts a new chapter that is eternal and filled with hope and life. And Jesus, if you know him as your savior and give your life to him, why would you want to go back to that life? Why would you want to have anything else? Why would you want any other relationship than the relationship you can have with the one that made you and the son of God who died for you? And that's why this passage begins so bluntly. Verses one and two, Paul says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue to sin that grace may abound? By no means. How could we who have died to sin still live in it? And being a Christian, that is God's motivation for our lives. This is how God has empowered us with victory over sin. How could we go on living in sin if we have new life? Even though God's grace is so deep, for us, even though we have found the ultimate purpose, the ultimate truth in our lives, why would we want to live any other way than knowing God and being in relationship with him? And that's our challenge. How do we keep from going back? And this is wisdom for, for tabs. This is wisdom for all of us here this evening. It's to trust God every day of your life. Give your life to him. Start afresh with this life offered in Jesus. Embrace the purpose and meaning of life which, is, which we were truly made to, to live in, and that's in relationship with God. God has given us a way to live for holy purposes. And once you've found that meaning, once you've found that truth, hold fast to the gospel of Jesus. Hold fast to that grace that is abound. Hold fast to the one who has set you free. How deep and vast that love is that God has given us. How deep that, that love is for you and I tonight. How deep that is every day of our lives when we know Jesus as Savior. So much so that his son would come and die for us. Maybe tonight you have not responded to that good news before. How we respond to that is, is it should humble us. Knowing and seeking salvation, knowing that we need redemption, knowing that we need God to fill us and change us. We heard this morning of how God can transform the most broken of lives. And one of the deepest joys of being a pastor is how you see that in, in, in different people's lives, how I've seen it in my life, how I've seen it in my family's life, how I've seen it in God's people's lives, how I believe and seen that, that God changes us from the inside. How God brings us to a deeper place of, of grace and love. How people's lives are changed when they've actually found the purpose in which we've been made for. If you don't know that today, I, I plead with you to repent, turn away from sin, seek God in your weakness. 
When you know Jesus, death and sin has no hold over you. Do you know that Jesus has given everything for you? Do you know that all he asks for in return is our lives? Have you been invited into Jesus' death and life? And baptism tonight, it helps us think of what this means. But I pray that more than tonight, that, that, that we would just see tabs go through, through the waters, that you would come to know and experience the freedom that's found in Jesus. I pray that you would know what it means to have Jesus as your Savior. And I pray that you would just understand that our purpose to life is to glorify and to love him, the one who created us. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the glory of the gospel. We give you thanks for, for, for how we come tonight unworthy, how we come in our weakness and we come in our brokenness. And yet in Christ Jesus, we have everything that we will ever need. Heavenly Father, whatever has brought us here tonight, I pray that we would be content, and not only content, but overjoyed with the gift of grace. We have done nothing to earn what you have given us. We don't deserve what you have given us, and yet freely you have loved us. And I thank you for this, this baptismal service for what baptism means and what it represents. Thank you that our old life has nothing on us and in you we have found new life. And I pray that when we live in that, that you would just show us the light and the path in which you take us. I pray tonight for those who don't know you, I pray that tonight would be a night of salvation. I pray that your spirit would speak into, into our lives today. Pray for this to be a day of repentance for those who desperately need you. In your precious name, we give you all the praise and the glory tonight. Amen. Well, you've heard enough from me. And I'm going to invite Tabs up, and she's going to come and share her testimony with us. Hello. I think, I think most people here know me, and Liam stole half of my introduction already. <laughs> so um, I moved up to Lossie just over two years ago for work. Um, I was looking for a church up here, and I was living with Ian and Judy, and they bought me, and I've been coming ever since, so you can't get rid of me that easily. <laughs> um, I was really fortunate to grow up in a Christian home. Um, I've got parents that taught me about the Bible from a very early age. And we always went to church on Sunday for both services. And we went, I went to Sunday school and we read the Bible together as a family. Some people um, can pinpoint the actual day and time that they became Christian. But for me, I can't really pinpoint it. I think I always believed that God existed. Um, and I was taught that even though my parents were Christians and my family and friends were Christians, that didn't necessarily make me want to. Um, but I didn't realize at the time that being a Christian was something that required a personal choice. What I do know is that one Sunday night in the summer of 2014, I made a personal choice. I prayed and I asked Jesus to come into my life. Once I had done that, and as time went on at school, my friends and my schoolmates would ask me about my faith. It was then that I started to question what I actually believed and why. I knew that Jesus loved me and that he had died for me personally. But when asked about other topics and aspects of my faith, I started to realize that I knew what my parents would say and what I'd been taught. But I realized that was the only reason why I believed what I did. It was at that point I knew that I needed to start figuring out answers so that I knew what I believed and why I believed it and not continue to base my beliefs on what I'd always been told. Since then, it's been a journey of reading the Bible, attending church, and learning more about what God says and how I can be more like Jesus. Through this, I have come to my own conclusions 
and I know what I believe is not just because that's what other people believe or say, but that's because of what the Bible says. I still have a lot to learn, but I'm looking forward to seeing where God takes me and how he can use me throughout my life. Thank you, Tabs. In a moment, we will um, prepare for, for the baptism. And before we do that, we're going to stand together and um, cue the band. And uh, in a moment, we're going to stand together. We're going to sing um, the hymn that, that Tabs has chosen for this evening, and that is How Great They Are. So in a moment, Kenny will ask you to stand, and um, we will sing together. <laughs>
who play my God how great thou art then sing my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sing Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art! How great Thou Ask Tabs um, three questions, but before that, we have um, our, our sponsor for, for Tabs, and that is that was going to be Caroline. And Caroline has um, written something um, on on uh, Tabs' behalf, and Amy Galt is going to come and read it for us just now. Am I on? Okay, there we go. <laughs> so, Caroline has wrote, We are sorry not to be able to attend Tabitha's baptism in person tonight, but I want to say it has been a pleasure getting to know Tabitha since she has started coming to Lossie Baptist Church. I believe that her commitment and dedication to the Lord's service and to his people is evident to all who know her. It is always a joy to see a young person who is committed to serving the Lord, and it is clear that Tabitha seems willing to put her hand to anything. She has been a particular blessing to me at the Young Women's Bible Study. Her love of God's word and her willingness to feed upon it and allow it to do its work upon her soul is a real encouragement to me. Her faith in him and willingness to seek his face and have her past directed by him too is obvious to me. She has been blessed to have been brought up in a Christian household and witnessed a life of service firsthand in her parents. It is clear to see that this life of service has helped shape Tabitha and by the grace of God, his wonderful works will be evident in her life too. We will give him all the glory for the step of obedience and surrender Tabitha is taking tonight. Tabitha, continue to seek his face and know tonight that if you seek first the kingdom of God, everything else you need will be added to you as well. God bless you and keep you, Tabitha, and may you know his presence tonight and steadfast love of all the days of your life. Amen. Thanks, Amy. Tabs, three questions for you, which you're going to respond, I do. Okay. <laughs> do you believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I do. Do you turn from sin, renounce evil, and intend to follow Christ? I do. Let's spend some time together in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for all the ways that you have led Tabitha. We thank you for that testimony that she gave of the recognition that although she knew the privilege that it is to grow up in a Christian home, that each and every one of us has to recognise that we cannot stand on the faith of others. We cannot even just assume that things will work out in the end. But in, in actual fact, we need to recognise that you've spoken to us by your word and that you've sent your son into this world to declare our need of faith in you. I thank you for her courage to go to the scriptures and to read for herself and to put in the work to recognise not just what she believes but why she believes it. And I thank you for the wonderful ways that you revealed yourself to her as she explored these things through your word. I thank you for the trigger that it was as our friends asked our questions 
And now that's led her now to this time where she's able to answer the questions and, and discuss these same uh, questions or different questions in different contexts towards our young people in our church who have questions of themselves for faith as well. Lord, I thank you for the way that you have used tabs in such mighty ways since you came here to Lottemouth. And Lord, though it may have seemed like it was an opportunity to have a dream job, of course, Lord, we recognise you sent her to Lossiemouth. Not only that she would be part of this church family and uh, come around the recognition and the, des the desire to be obedient to you in your command for us to repent and be baptised, but also, Lord, because you recognised the important peace that she would be in this church and the blessing that she has been as being part of this church and the way that she has glorified you and helped build the kingdom in this church too. Lord, we pray that this day wouldn't be a day that has come to the head of our life, but instead, Lord, this would be a catalyst for all of our life ahead of her. That not only have you been faithful to her in the past, Lord, we pray for a blessing upon her, that you would continue to be her anointing, her guidance, that as Caroline shared, that, that you would make her path straight, Lord. If she seeks first the kingdom, everything else will be added unto her, Lord. And I thank you that today she is declaring publicly her desire to pick up her cross and follow you. Her desire to seek your kingdom above all things, knowing that that's what it means to be living in all of its life and abundance. And Lord, we pray that you would pour life in all of its abundance into tabs as she has been faithful to you tonight. Lord, we know you have already and will be faithful to her. But Lord, would you show your faithfulness to her. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Tabitha, on the confession of your faith and at your own request, we now baptise you in the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He knows my name. Let's stand to sing, I have a maker, he formed my heart.
have seen and seen the profession of Tabs's declaration of faith today. What a joy a baptismal service is, and what a joy this service together has been. This is the beginning of the, the new chapter, the excitement of what is to come for Tabs. This isn't the, the end, but only the start of what God is continuing to do within her life. And as a church, it's important when anybody is baptized within our fellowship that we commit to supporting and, and prayer and encouragement and discipleship and building maturity in a person's life. And we're going to take a moment now for, for tabs. I'm going to invite tabs up again in a moment. And, and as a leadership, um, as we represent the church, we're going to just spend a bit of time praying for her, praying for these next steps, and then praying for her as she continues to grow in Christ-like maturity. So we're going to invite tabs to come up again and, and for the leaders, the elders, and the deacons to come up on, at, at the front as well. And we'll have a bit of time of prayer for Tabitha. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this declaration of faith that we've seen. Thank you that already we see in, in Tabs' life the way in which you have directed her and led her. Lord, thank you for, for the gift um, her, her gifts are, and she as a gift is to us as a fellowship. Lord, I think of all of the, the young people within our fellowship who have, have got to know her, have just experienced a, a sense of your love through her, and Lord, for her ability just to, to share in, in their life and also to speak the gospel into their life as well. Lord, I give you thanks for that. We pray for these next steps for her. We thank you for her work. We thank you for um, this, this new season of life in which she has um, recently came into. And we just give you thanks for all these things. Lord, for the witness that she is um, to those in which she works with, and for the difference that she has in her life because she knows you, I pray for her witness to others, that they would, they would see the, the, the glory of, of you within her actions and her attitudes towards others, for her compassion, for her grace that she shows. And Lord, I pray for those opportunities to share the good news of Jesus um, with those that she encounters. Thank you for her. Thank you for this, just this gift of a day, this beautiful day that that we can rejoice in and be glad because you are our King and our Savior. We give you thanks for all that you do. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for Tabs and for the joy that it's been as she's joined in our fellowship and as she's just come alongside and um, it just doesn't seem like two years. She's just become so part of the community that we have as a church. And we just thank you for her. And we thank you for the, the next part of this journey and for the excitement that she's um, partaking in as she joins in and shows herself and delights in you in every step and everything that she does. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, as we have gathered here again tonight to witness this public declaration of the faith that Tibetha has in the Lord Jesus Christ, Father, we give you thanks for her. We thank you, Father, for every aspect that in this church that she participates in. And we just pray, Father, even in the days that lie ahead, Father, that you would be near her, that you would guard her, that you would keep her. And that as we as a fellowship, Father, would be ever ready, Father, just to be a help in this area, that we would be ever ready, Father, to help to strengthen her and to guide her in the days that lie ahead. We know, Father, that the evil one might even want to attack her but because of the witness that she has been here tonight. But we just pray, Father, that by your Holy Spirit, that you will cover her with a special protection, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord, we do give you thanks for tabs, and we do pray 
that this would be a day where she'd be able to look back upon and recognize not only a significant step in her life as, as she has publicly declared the faith that we have all seen, that we've all delighted to see uh, so fruitful in her life, Lord, but that this would be a, a time of, of real obedience to you and a time when you would speak into her life about your plans for her, Lord, your desire for her, your hopes for her. And we thank you for the ways that you have already spoken. And Lord, we look forward to seeing the ways that you will continue to speak. We pray, Lord, for that shield of faith as Chris has prayed that um, she would be protected by that shield of faith, that, Lord, her faith would keep her strong, that this would be a time, Lord, when she would sense your presence in a, in a special way, Lord, as she is drawn close to you. We know that you've promised through the book of James that you will draw close to us, Lord. We pray for that word, that sword of the Spirit, the word, the Scripture, to be her guidance, Lord, that she would always turn to it, knowing that it's sharper than any two-edged sword. We thank you for the salvation, the helmet of salvation that you've given to her to protect her mind, to protect her life, Lord. We thank you for the breastplate of righteousness. And we do pray, Lord, that as she has taken a step of obedience to you, that that obedience would be seen in all of her life, Lord. And we pray for that belt of truth, that she would stand strong on it, Lord, and being able to express it not only into her own life, but to others as well, Lord, as she puts on those shoes of the gospel of peace and is able to go wherever you send her, Lord. We thank you for the fact that you have sent her to Lossie Mouth, for her desire to return after her uh, uh, short training down south. And we thank you for her eagerness to return and our eagerness to receive her, Lord, in the way that has just been wonderful, where um, she's become so clearly part of the, the church here. And Lord, we, we love her. We delight in her. We're so pleased that you have sent her to us and we recognize it as that way. So Lord, uh, equip her fully in the whole armor of God. Mm -hmm. Make it strong. Make it secure, Lord. And we just pray a real blessing upon her as she spends the rest of her days ahead, recognizing that in obedience to you is where life is found. Picking up her cross, recognizing that life without you is empty, but life with you is full in life and all its beauty. And so, Lord, would you continue to reveal to her that life in abundance, that life's beauty, and especially, Lord, in these coming weeks, would you just fill her with a strength of faith. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Before we close our service, we're going to sing together once more. So let's stand as we continue in worship. Change my heart, O oh God, and stand to sing them. Change my heart, O oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh
you're all warmly welcome for um, teas and coffees next door um, just before we close, uh, just after we close. And again, I, I want to encourage you if you're here today and something has spoken to you and you want to respond to anything that you've heard, anything you've seen through this declaration of faith, then please do not go away without speaking to anybody. And again, that we have our Christianity Explored course starting in a few weeks' time on the 23rd of August. Please, please come along if you have questions. It would be um, a joy to see you there. Ephesians 3.20 says this, Now to him who is able to do far abundantly more than we ask or think according to the power at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Change my heart, oh.